Between political tensions and every single growth stock, I like a domino effect just falling off a bloody cliff here, folks. There's one thing we can always rely on, and that is those juicy dividends. So today I thought it would be fun after having a conversation yesterday, getting you guys to help me out, sharing with me your favorite dividend stocks, comprising a list at which I'm going to make a video about that list. I thought it would be fun today to give you insights on what compounded growth of dividends really looks like, because it's not too often I share with you my payment schedule within my over 360000 dollar stock portfolio which right now surprisingly i ran the math and i'm down between four and a half and five percent over the entire portfolio i'm going to show you the accounts the growth stocks that i'm down on but hey we're still outperforming the market to the downside but damn it won't take a big blimp from say some of these big tech companies like apple microsoft or tesla to really catch me up to being down and to a similar perspective of the market but only time will tell and you can consider subscribing because of course i'm always going to be transparent with you guys on this channel so let's get right into this so before we dive down into the accounts guys let's look at the continued volatility because most of the large caps luckily are stuck in a range outside of those few exceptions obviously like Shopify today but I mean considering Biden just came out guys you know standing at that helicopter all those political tensions going on with Russia because they're not really removing troops from the border like a lot of people thought were at the Ukraine so it's like this kangaroo market between what's going on with the political tensions right now and like I said don't trust anything you read in the media I would just sit back pretend like this isn't happening and just come back back in a year. We'll see where we're at. Um, the only real good news out of these accounts, guys, or these stocks for me on my list is obviously the REITs are still doing exceptionally well. It looks like Rio can could push that $25 mark. And on top of that, MPW, Medical Properties Trust, another holding of mine, which we'll see in the account, has raised the dividend. Somebody mentioned that in our chat group today. So thanks for shouting that out. Outside of the other exceptions, guys, small caps are still getting hammered to some varying degrees. But I'm surprised that I've grazed through this pretty seamlessly. Like I said, the accounts aren't down nearly as much as I would have expected running the math on them. And let's just get right into it, see what I'm up, what I'm down on. We'll go through each one of these accounts and show you guys kind of the compounded growth rate you can get from being a long-term investor. Now, kicking it off with the TFSA, guys, I did do a little bit of shuffling around in here because I really wanted to continue to diversify this tax-advantaged account because once you get too concentrated, you start losing money, you'll never get that contribution room back. So I did scale down Canadian Apparel Bank, Bank of Nova Scotia. I pivoted some of that money into RioCan uh, just to continue adding some of that diversity and get that kind of more stabilized monthly income out of this account. On the US side of the border, and many of you know, I had scaled down Apple. I did scale down Microsoft. I pivoted some of that into the VYM. And I also sold a little bit of the S&P 500 index just to shift a little bit more into the uh, the VYM just to kind of, again, increase those dividend yields. Luckily, Apple and Microsoft haven't got hit too hard yet. But like I said, I feel like we're in a domino market. It's just a matter of time before we start seeing these other large caps kind of fall apart. So I just want to be a little bit careful. So just to kind of mitigate the risk, you know, scale them down slightly. But let's talk about the income details. This is where things always continue to blow my mind guys because when we take a look just from the Canadian side of the border I, I've been buying these companies for years I mean Bank of Nova Scotia and Canadian Apparel Bank within this account are yielding me over five and a half percent combined I mean these things aren't yielding much more than four percent these days but between the, all the Canadian stocks we are not getting less than four percent out of this account which is just marvelous at two thousand eight hundred and nine dollars Canadian annually mm, beautiful stuff on the US side of the border guys like I said it's kind of a humble brag but I'm yielding five percent off my initial Apple purchase. Uh, you're, I think it takes so long if you're buying Apple today to have a compounded uh, interest kind of growth on the dividend to get to that level again. Um, so I'm going to hold those shares obviously into the long, but I've always sold Apple down. I've done nothing but sell it over the years. Uh, MPW here, guys, this is going to increase nicely once that dividend increase impacts the actual account. It will be beautiful. Microsoft 2.4%, Southern Company 5.7%, Stag 4.67%, uh, VOO at 1.5%, VYM at 3.34%. I don't know how accurate the VYM payout is because uh, at quarter over quarter, it's a little bit rocky. So this might adjust a little bit, but getting 1921 US dollars annually off the US side of this account, which is about 2400 CAD combined, this account is making me something like $600 a month. And I love the way that uh, I kind of get this nice little payout schedule at the top here, just kind of divvies it up month over month to kind of show how it gets paid out. Now talking 
about the managed account where I've done a little bit more shuffling. This is where I've added smart centers. Um, and I'm kind of glad I made this decision here, guys, because smart centers did post really good earnings. The stock has been rallying right against RioCan since I bought it. Things have been coming up nicely. RioCan, as mentioned, still the largest position in my portfolio, even after scaling it down between this account and kind of adding a bit more to the other account. I'm still owning quite a decent chunk of it. I keep saying I'm going to scale it down again just to fix the, the average weightings because I think it makes up about 6.3 or 4% of my entire portfolio. But for now, because I'm really comfortable with the real estate sector, I'm just going to sit on that. And then obviously we got TELUS and TD in here. And just talking about it from a payout standpoint, folks, let's take a look here because we got RealCan. God, that I picked that up at a good price because my initial purchase is paying 6%, which is right in line with smart centers because real candid re increased the dividend. So it's wonderful that, you know, buying these on the dips cost averaging is really bringing in these juicy uh, overall yields, right? And then obviously TELUS paying out 5% and then the Toronto Dominion Bank paying out 4% got in these things at great prices, getting 2065 annually out of this account. And the monthly payout on this one's beautiful because it's structured so well. It's much more consistent than my TFSA. And then finally, the RR to the S to the P account, guys, uh, where I've also done a bit of shuffling. And we're seeing a little bit of red in here from some of these initial purchases, like Pfizer, which I told you I really want Pfizer to come down. I'm, I'm not going to add to it probably for the next few months, but we're going to see how the market plays out. Presuming Pfizer drops down to that lower $40 mark, fingers crossed. I'll be contributing more to this account and uh, averaging into Pfizer, VYM, and I will probably continue to buy the S&P 500, presuming it continues to downtrend from here. Now, in this account, the payout is pretty beautiful as well. Nothing in this account pays much less than 3% outside of VOO. So you can see that when you kind of take in this dividend style of investing, where your accounts are pretty much yielding well over 3% amongst almost all of your holdings, oh man, it, it gets really... Uh, comforting, honestly, looking at this. So we're getting 1,115 annually from the US side of the border in this account, which doesn't, I don't have to pay any withholding tax on these guys. I've talked about this before. On my US stocks in the TFSA, I have to pay withholding tax. In the RSP, I don't pay any withholding tax. So that's why I kind of hold some of these lower paying uh, US stocks. I don't think it really makes too much of a difference, but either way, I mean, great companies in here doing very well. And then finally, guys, I can't really show you the payout ratios and the payouts on my uh, corporate account, but for the first time since I started this corporate account, it is now in the red. I am down 5.81% after seeing a massive something like 15 or 20% rally. So we are finally uh, down in the red from growth investing in this account, guys. Now, I did recently buy more Royal Bank in this account. Uh, it hasn't updated just yet. This is really the only stock I'm seeing a lot of green on because since I've been buying this, Royal Bank has been trucking along nicely this year. But as we scroll into the tech side of this portfolio, yes. Guys, the pain is real. Now, my initial purchase price on Facebook is kind of hard to disseminate because I've been moving it around at much lower cost averaged prices. So I, I have to double check to see how much I'm truly down. But from the rebuybacked shares, I mean, God, guys, we're down 30%, down $5,000. You can't avoid them all. I mean, it's unfortunate, but you know, you're not going to pick 100% of winners in your portfolio. And right now, Facebook is that loser. And I'm still extremely fearful of Google and Tesla. Now they have been pulling back from their highs here, obviously. And right now, guys, we're just barely green on Google and still pretty uh, green on Tesla. Tesla's got to drop down uh, to about 695 for my cost average uh, to be on the red from when I started buying it back. Because you got to keep in mind, guys, I've, I've owned Tesla since 2019. I've owned these stocks for a very long time. It's just as I move them between accounts, I lose my initial purchase price because my initial purchase price on Tesla is like back in the 2019 range. So by God, no means complaining there. But at a fear that those things are going to domino effect, like I said, just from a risk tolerance standpoint, I did scale them back because I want to protect my downside risk. I'm not one of these people that's going to hedge the market, bet against the market. But one way to hedge yourself is two things, stack cash and make sure you're not over leveraged into anything that is too aggressive and you know too concentrated in one sector of the market. But combining all of that together, guys, uh, we can't really complain here too much. Um, I thought I would have been down a lot more, but... Uh, uh, who knows? Time will tell whether that takes into impact um, com in comparison to some of these other tech stocks. I mean, Shopify, man, is just blowing my mind at how much it's falling off a cliff here. But I want to pass this question off to you guys. Um, I'm going to make a video soon just kind of comparing a lot of these dividend stocks you mentioned. I'd love to hear more of your dividend stocks in that comment section below. But hopefully this offered some insight today. And if you appreciate it, hit that like button, subscribe for future updates. But stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one.